Do you like a Virtual Reviews logo? If you do, then you might want to buy a t-shirt with the channel's logo. Just head to geekygoodies.com slash reviews and grab a t-shirt for yourself or your friends. By buying Virtual Reviews t-shirts, you are supporting the channel, so thank you for that. And don't forget that you can also support the channel through Patreon. Just head to patreon.com slash reviews and choose the reward level that suits you best. Your support means a lot. With enough support, this channel will continue providing you with the content and you will be able to contribute to that as well. Thank you to everyone who watches and supports this channel. Hello there, folks. So, today we will be continuing the collection run-through. It's the part two. It's a um, few days later and I wanted it to be recorded. But nothing really changed except one game came in, so it doesn't really matter. So, anyway... Let's start. Uh, we left off from here. We went through all of what was on top here and the first two rows. So there are our last two rows. So let's start from here, what we have here. So here we have Clank in space. So yeah, it, probably most of you know about Clank. So about the Clank in space, the thing about this one is that um, Clank is basically the deck building game where you go through the dungeon as well, you collect rewards, but you do all of that through the deck building and you get all the actions. Clank in Space kind of adds more to the game. I don't remember exactly, but there are some different pods where you can escape from something like that, and it's a little bit more gamery Clank. So if Clank can be not a casual game, but can be quite an easy game uh, for, for folks, then this one is more gamery. So that's Clank in Space. That's why I have Clank in Space. I, I haven't played it, but I have played the original Clank. But yeah, when we do any collection, so I have Clank in Space now. So Exodus Proxima Centauri. Now, um, this is the bigger box. Oh, it's heavy as well. So this is a 4X. Um, like, there's a ton of stuff in it. Um, it's like Twilight Imperium Light, somebody says. So... It's a nice looking box and such. So I'm. The, no, the thing is that I'm not into space themed 4X games. But with this one, why I bought this one? First of all, it was on sale for insanely good price, you know? And I always wanted to try this one. I don't know why. Although I'm not into 4X space games, I really wanted to try the Exodus Proxima Centauri. Um, and. As now, as like few years went by, and I saw it for insanely cheap price, I was like, whatever, I'm gonna get it. If I will like it, good. If not, I will sell it because I didn't pay much for that. So I will get the money back. So, Abyss, wonderful, beautiful game. I still have it. I have the expansion as well for it. So, and I have this cover, the this uh, purple lady cover. So, um, Abyss is a set collection game. Uh, push your luck game, you are getting those um, minions, whatever they are, then you're paying with them for the lords, will give you special abilities, they give you keys as well, and you, with the lords you get the locations, uh, and locations score you more points. And the expansion adds the black pearls, which are basically like a um, negative points, if you get too many of them, Kraken as well, and the treasures as well, which is more push your luck. It's very simple game in my opinion, but it's it's really nice. It's it's so streamlined and it's so smooth and it's so gorgeous looking that it's a very satisfying experience. Now Hisho, another game. Um Born Catalan involved here, Born Catalan involved here as well. Um I really like Hisho. Some people don't like it as much, but with me, like I was surprised by how much I like this game because this is outsmarting, outguessing game where you are going to different locations with your ships, but you want to be there alone. You want to be the only one going to that location so you can claim all the cards. So, and you have those animal folks, anthropomorphic thing there. You have the theater. You want the, uh, the king's mood to be uh, on right side so you score more points. It's very simple as well. Really cool looking and very nice outsmarting, outguessing your opponent's game. So, let's go with Mexica. Mexica now is an abstract game. This is the Super Meeple version of that one. 
So if you take a look, it's it's gorgeous. This is a gorgeous game with those gorgeous pyramids and such. So I played the new, the Super Meeple uh, Tikal version of the game. When you look at this box, it's beautiful. And I don't know much about the game, but I just... I want to try all those, like, kind of classics. It's based on whatever I don't remember. Uh, but... I like if the abstract games have this kind of an ancient theme to them, and if they look beautiful, then why not? Maybe I'll find the abstract game I will enjoy so much that I will keep in the collection. I can play it maybe with uh, my colleagues from work who are not into heavy games yet. Then we have Yamatai, uh, which is one of my favorite games of 2017. 17, 17 should be. So, um, in this game, this is a game similar to Five Tribes. It's kind of a spiritually connected to Five Tribes because there are quite a few things that connect. Although they are different, they still connect. And in this one, you are building up those routes with boats. And, uh, yeah, you, you are surrounding... Like, boats are resor resources. You are surrounding uh, those islands with resources, with boats, and then you can build on them. You want to get them more coins, more uh, points, and so on. And then you have those specialists, which I love, because when you get those specialists, they give you, grant you some, some boost to your actions, which uh, makes you stronger in one or the other aspect of the game and makes you different from another player. I really like to play with two, because then, um, like in Five Tribes, you both have um, two turns in a round, and this is amazing. Some people hate that. I love that, by the way. I just love it, because you can do some chain reactions, you know? Then, this war of mine is based on the um the what was it called the, the the video game the the same name video game this war of mine but it's a board game where you go through the rules as you play which is cool it has the app as well it has lots of cool components and such it's a big game it's probably a long game and it's a story driven game it's a sad game and sci hurts like Quite a few, you know, I, I heard mixed reviews about this game, but I'm still looking forward to playing this one. I haven't played it yet, but I'm still looking forward to playing this great looking game with... I, I still like the thematic aspect of it. I mean, like the theme. How it's done, the war and cruel war and uh, just simple people trying to survive. Then, this white box is a chart the stone. And there's not much to show you, except the cool looking box. Uh, Charter Stone is a legacy game, Euro game, where you build up your village and you build up the center of the map with worker spots, more worker spots to come up. I haven't played it, but I'm about maybe to, to at some point, uh, take it out with my uh, colleagues from work who are not into games that much, but I'm sure this game will be not too... I played Time Stories with them already, so I, I think it will not be too heavy of a game for them, and I think they will enjoy the ride. And I'm looking for this one. I'm hoping for a great, 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 great experience. Even though if maybe if the story element isn't as great, I'm still hoping to have that kind of a great feel of a Euro-type legacy game. Just that's Charter Stone. Then we have Empire Sage of Discovery. I'm going to take out all the box, but uh, there is a ton of stuff. I have everything for, for this one, even the metal coins. Um, the, the expansion and such. So I like everything. This is the deluxe version. And Empire's Age of Discovery is my number two top game of all time. And uh, I love it because it has the worker placement. It has different workers. It, have, it has area control, but it's not in a bad... I mean, like, it's not in a, an extremely aggressive way. You're just trying to control the territories and you're going through the worker placement. You have set collection of goods. The goods give you money. With that money, you can get the buildings, which give you special abilities. They make you better than the others in some aspects, but some uh, go the other strategy route there. And it's just a lot of stuff. And there's kind of a push your luck with the discovery tokens as well. When you discover new regions, there's a little bit of that push your luck as well. And I love how the workers are different in the field. Like missionaries give more people. Uh, soldiers can um, can fight and merchants give you gold and so on. So the captains are great for exploring and, and, and discovery. So this is an amazing game. I love it. I love it so much and I can play it anytime. That's Empire's Age of Discovery. Then we have Quadropolis, which is also an amazing game. And it's a city building game and it's a light game, but I play the expert variant and I don't have the expansion for it but because it, I haven't played it for a while. And, um, 
The problem with this is that it just it didn't come to the table. But I still love this game, and I'm sure I will get it out on the table with my colleagues, and they will love it as well. It's an like it looks like an app, but it's a very smart game where you are getting your architects and you are trying to build up your board with uh, all those different buildings, and they inter the scoring is interesting because the buildings interact with each other and they score based on what is uh, surrounding them and that's what I like and the, what architects you use depends on where you can place the building on your player board very smart game very cool game that's Quadropolis a great production as well then we have When I Dream uh, which I had the first version of and we did a review for that one as well and we sold it but now I got it back because I liked it, Alina didn't like it, I liked it more and it's... I, I wanted to get some games which I could play with like six plus players and this is one of them and this is very... this is kind of a stressful for the one who uh, has this um, eye patch on, on, on them and they are trying to guess the words the others are trying to hint towards and this is a little bit stressful but I mean like in a good way, I like that I like the speed element, I like the guess, um, bird guessing element in this one, it's beautiful as well. And it's just fast, it's easy to learn and understand, it's great for a bigger number of players, that's when I dream. Then Catacombs and Castles, which I got from the Kickstarter because. Now the thing is that now I have the Catacombs and I would rather play Catacombs 3rd edition with two players. And Catacombs and Castles offers the uh, team variant. Uh, team versus team playing and that's what I prefer and it should be a lighter experience uh, a faster experience than Catacombs 3rd edition and it might be that I will not play like I played with Alina but, but right now I need to find another person who played with because I'm not gonna play Catacombs 3rd edition with more than two players because I love like I love to control heroes I don't want to play the overlord I want somebody to control the overlord and then I can play all the heroes when you play heroes, if you divide those heroes between many players, then you do your shot and you're done, you know. Uh, but with uh, controlling multiple heroes, you have multiple shots, as has the uh, Overlord, who has a lot of shots, because he has a lot of minions to activate during his turn, his or her turn. So, so Catacombs and Castles, hoping for maybe a replacement to Catacombs, because I don't think I need to own both. But we'll see. Although I love Catacombs 3rd Edition, I really love it, but I'm hoping for, for a replacement here so I can play with teams and play with more uh, casual gamers. So, Sonar, which is a replacement for Captain Sonar. I haven't played it yet, but basically this is a Captain Sonar for 2-4 to four players. And that's where the Captain Sonar struggle is that Captain Sonar is best with 8 players and like... Right now, yes, with my colleagues I could get the 8 players, but on the other hand it would be... I don't know. I, I, I feel like if you can play with four players as well and make a great experience out of it as well, then why not? And I'm hoping it will deliver. I haven't played it yet, though. Then here we have Get Off My Land, which I just got from Kickstarter. It's a game about farming and economy. And you are basically building your uh, whatever the uh, f farms and like... I think it's a central farming stuff, but you build your own fences so the animals will not run away. You're going to marketplace and you are getting corn and chicken and cows and whatever. And you're trying to get the most money. Um, I don't remember, I, I really liked it, how it looked on the Kickstarter. So I got this one now and we'll see how it goes. I like, it, like their economy games as well. Then, oops, and now it's done. It's stuck, but it's the Queen Domino. It's uh, King Domino Advanced with some extras. I'm not going to talk about much about that, but um, and <laughs> I don't remember much about that. But I have played King Domino. I really like King Domino, but it's a little bit too light, and I'm hoping for Queen Domino to be of a better game. So Arena for the Gods, uh, which I like very much as well. It basically replaces for me King of Tokyo and King of New York. But I played the others quite much and. Now, I, although, that's the thing, they, they fit well, and I'm sure the King of Tokyo would be a hit in my uh, group of uh, my uh, co-workers who are not into games that much, but I played this one with them as well, and they like it very much, because it's a smash-up of Ultimate Warriors and King of Tokyo, in my opinion. I made a review of that, so you can take a look, 
and Arena for the Gods. I like it. Um, I like how you gather equipment and then go fighting. And it's quite fast. So that's that. Then we have uh, Dead of Winter Flick Em Up. Because it's a Dead of Winter. And Flick Em Up. The, the, I wanted to try another flicking game. And with, with this one, we play the very basic scenario. So I'm not sure about if I like the game. I need to play more. I need to play maybe with, maybe with more people or maybe with less people. I don't know. I need to experiment with that and play more advanced scenarios with this one in order to say you, uh, tell you something about the game. But for now, it's, it was fine. It was nice, but nothing exceptional. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I need to play it more in order to get it. So let's go down here. But let's put this get off my land. Get off my land here. Cowboy. So uh, here we have um, The Lost Expedition, which I love. It's one of the best games of 2017 for me. And in this one, uh, you're explorers, you're going through, you, you puzzle out. Basically, it's a very puzzly co cooperative uh, card game. There is a re review for that. You can take a look at that one. I really like it. It's, um, it's very accessible. It's really easy to teach to people. But this puzzle aspect and Teddy always surviving and such. So the last expedition, I'm not going to talk much about it. But I, I, I love this game. And there is a review for that. So, oh, let's try to get this one out. Uh, this is Einstein, which I got from Essen. I was um, enamored by, by the looks of it. Like, you have this kind of a tiling aspect. You have those different decks of Einsteins. Um, I don't remember much about the game, though, right now. But it was uh, with wooden inserts. I, I got it from the auction. And um, I'm hoping for a cool game. And it says cooperative and, oh, cooperative and competitive. That's nice. A nice theme, Einstein. A nice art as well. It should be... Should be Quanche Moria, I think. Then Cold Names do it. Um, I'm not sure... Like, I love Cold Names, but basically when I get those... I have so many word games now already. I mean, I don't need many of them because I don't want to play many of them, but I have the Insider. But with Cold Names, I left Cold Names with Alina and, and Pictures as well because they were in the same box. And I got Cold Names do it which I hope will be a great game for two. And some people say it's, an, it's a really great experience for two, for code names. It's like cooperative two-player experienced code names. So, um, experienced code names? What did I say? I don't know. Anyway, uh, World's Fair, which I like very much. This is a game for two to four players. Uh, it has this area control, area majority, sorry. Um, and then... It's very simple. It's kind of a set collection. You're collecting those tokens. And there are some special actions you can do. And you move your tokens, your cubes around. And you're trying to get the majority of stuff. But um, I really like the idea of how you can get the cards, where you get them, how they land on the next turn and such. So it's a very nice streamlined, meet to light Euro game. Very straightforward. But that's what I like about this one. That's World's Fair. Take a look at this one. It's really hard to explain it. I need to show you more about this one. Hit the Road, which I like very much. I think I did a review for Hit the Road as well. This is not the right one. I mean, this 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 is the cover, just like the illustration stuff. But Hit the Road, um, in this one you have a lot of push your luck. You're going through the, those different... Like, each one of you, we do the auction, and then we choose a road. Whoever won the auction will choose the road first which will go through at first, it's really easy, you get more resources, but at last, when the third deck comes out, there are lots of uh, enemies, like lots of zombies to fight, and no resources to pick up, and then you feel, you you start feeling really stressed, because uh, you don't have resources to beat with, uh, to choose your role, but if you choose last, then there will be only the bad ones left and such, so you need to survive the game. And get points as well. Everyone who will survive the game will get uh, many points as well. But in this one, it hits the road. I love how how the, the stress is in... It's a good stress. I like this kind of a stress in this game. And also the, uh, the push your luck where you are like, should I spend like ammunition in order to do the, uh, the shooting? Uh, or should I go and not spend ammunition right now? Maybe spend it on critical moments and then try to get the right dice 
you know, right now and just push, push my luck. I just explained it so badly. But take a look at the review. Uh, <laughs> Arkham Horror, the card game. By the way, um, I wasn't enamored with L LCGs and such, So, but the Arkham Horror, the card game, I thought I I'm going get to get it because I love Arkham Horror setting and uh, I also wanted to try some kind of a solo game. And I tried it solo. It's really good solo. I like it. It's the first game I, I liked solo, but I also love it with two as well. So, um, Arkham Horror, the card game, it's Arkham Horror in a card game, plays well with two, plays well with one. This one is a Farlight, I got it from Essen, and in this one, um, I really like the aspect of building up and how it looks. I don't remember much about the game though, um, I just don't remember about the game, the near future, space corporations, agents, blah, 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 blah. gather, charge up the monster rocket boosters to sign your crew and race for space. Uh, designer of King's Forge, Streamlight, game of spaceship building, um, resource gathering and bidding wars. Okay, uh, <laughs> it looks great and I like building up your kind of a spaceship with those um, connections and such. So um, let's hope it's a great game. I don't know why I bought it, but um, you know, this is the uh, problem of a gamer. So what we have here, here we have Summoner's Duel. Uh, which I love. It's one of the best two-player games out there. I have the metal coins and everything in it. It's an expansion. And it's a Seven Wonders, but in a dual variant. I like the drafting from the center. I didn't like Seven Wonders, uh, Seven Wonders original one that much. In this one, this is very fast. It's really easy to teach. And um, I like the uncovering cards. So if, like, like make your opponent uncover cards for you and not you uncover cards for the opponent. And building up those... Uh, uh, wonders will make you will, will give you sometimes extra turns or maybe some boost in gold or something like that. So I like that as well. Some of this duel, a great game. And then what we have here as well is Tao Long, uh, which I played only once so far. I played very basic, so I'm not sure what to think about this game yet. Uh, but in this one, you are controlling dragons, a two player game. But I got the four player expansion as well. And I like the idea of, of this kind of a Mancala mechanic where you, you take the stones from that where you drop your last stone and you go counterclockwise. It's this is the movement or this is the action you do. And all the actions are different movements and there are different restrictions. And uh, you are trying to bite the other dragon and kind of defeat him. But a very basic version is just a plain, you know, ground you just roam around. But in this one, as I see. You can see here there's a mountain, there are portals. I think that the uh, the other scenarios where you have portals, mountains and some other stuff in it, it's going to boost up the game quite a lot. So I'm hoping for a great game here. That's uh, Tao Long, abstract game as well. So then we have Saint Malo. Uh, in Saint Malo, this is uh, what I call roll and write game, but it's with the dry eraser markers where you... I like it very much. It's uh, in in here. You are rolling dice, and then you're getting the people. You're getting the uh, all the different buildings and stuff that score you points at the end of the game. And sometimes the pirates come in and destroy stuff. And then you need to build up the walls around the city as well. And you are getting the coins and bricks on the, on the side, as you can see here. So you can um, then uh, build up and such. So it's a very nice roll and write game with lots of theme in my opinion, um, com compared to quite a few other roll and write games which are very, very abstract. Uh, then we have Sakura, Sakura, which is a trick-taking game where you don't want to take tricks. And uh, those are two piles, one is uh, where you need to play a s smaller number or a higher number or exactly the same um, type of cards, but when you grab those piles, which are minus points, you also get some stars and such with what you can also, not the stars, but like coins with which you can buy those special abilities. And those special abilities boost up your turn. They can make you survive the round and not take uh, the piles in the future. So very nice, very engaging and fast game, trick taking with a twist, but I like the twist of not wanting to get the trick. And that's cool. So, uh, Paper Tales, which is a deck builder, reminded me a little bit of Seven Wonders. Um, 
because I don't even remember why. <laughs> anyway, it's a it's a deck builder, uh, and then you're matching the icons. But like some cards are in front, some cards are on the back, and the cards age. And as the cards age, they go away. You cannot keep cards forever. And the cards are what that are in the front are also. F uh, for fighting and kind of you get some extra points or whatever so you can uh, basically you get more if you if you have better fighters in front but some abilities are better in the front some abilities are better on the back uh, in, sorry in, in the back row and you are building the buildings up so which uh, give you some special abilities as well it's very light but very engaging uh, kind of a deck builder kind of a towards some wonders uh, game was it I think it was yeah, I need to play it more. <laughs> That's why I'm I'm getting forgetful now. So now um, unlock, which I love. I love unlock. I love exit. I love all the escape room games. And in this one, this is the second one. I I keep it because if somebody wants to play unlock, I, when I get unlock, I play it right away. Like all the scenarios in a row, because I love unlock. But um, I keep it because I can give it to someone else because it's replayable. You just you just put the cards in the right order, give it to the other player, and it's very accessible. It's very light. I mean, it it's hard. The puzzles are hard, and the the, the twenty pulse treasure. This is this is my favorite scenario from from those. A great one, like amazing one. This was okay. Uh, this was uh, very thematic, very different. I like this one, but this was amazing. This was just like two levels beyond the other two, and. Um, in, in Unlock, I really like the idea how if, like, there is tutorial, and you can go through the tutorial really fast, like 15 minutes, with the app, you don't need to read the rules, and anybody, even casual gamers, or any, any person can play this game, that's what I like about this game, that's Unlock, I love it, I made comparison video of different um, escape room games, I have it on my channel, take a look, under discussions playlist, I think. And then Summer is Gardener, which is... A, um, uh, it's like a honcho where you build up uh, those uh, grids and then you score points on when you let, put a card down. If um, the same terrain type matches, then you get some kind of points for that. And balancing great speed and default. There is a speed uh, element in it where you kind of uh, slap your hand on a card that you want. I don't like that. I need to review this one. I need to play it more. But I like building up your kind of um, greed and getting points for that. Then we have Halloween, uh, which is... i show you the cover. Really cool looking cover. Uh, I will review this one as well. I need to play it more. And it was heavier than I thought. In Halloween, uh, you are controlling ghosts, but you're all controlling all the ghosts together. But it's a competitive game, and you have those action slots here, and then you are using the different rows, which are basically the same actions, but you're using the different actions on them. And sometimes you need to prepare a ghost, or, or make the ghost appear in order to move that ghost, and then you want to meet the objectives on, of such, and, and get them more coins um, and tokens, which will give you, which you can spend on the objective cards, and... Like, uh, I need to play it more in order to explain you better, but it's a heavier game than I thought, and it's a very, it's a very different game in my opinion. I don't know, it's just the feel is different, although all the mechanics are the same as in any other games, but but this one, this this kind of action role, I'll get to it with, in the review, so, so you will get to it as well. So let's put it away for now. That's Halloween. And uh, let's put away someone's door for now. So here we have the last two boxes here. Uh, Kallax boxes, I mean, not the game box. Pioneer's Day. Um, I will be reviewing this one as well. I love this game. It's a great game. It's a streamlined um, Euro game. You're rolling dice and you're drafting dice from those positions. When you draft dice, you get them as uh, special abilities or you get them as money or you get them as people. And you have those people as well, which will give you some one-time bonuses or a continuous bonuses or maybe end-game conditions or such. And they will all give you the end-game uh, scorings as well. And you're trying to kind of uh, 
play out smart. Uh, the last die which is not taken, there will always be the last die which is not taken, will advance one of the tracks right here, and these are the disasters. And if disasters will happen, they will happen to everyone, and sometimes you need to discard half of your gold. Uh, you need to pay for your cows, otherwise you will... Uh, or, yeah, you lose your cows. Uh, you need to pay medicine for people in order, in order for them not to die, not to be discarded, or you need to protect your carts uh, of the storm, you need to kind of repair, repair them and pay wood. So you prepare all of that, you prepare all those stuff, and it's great looking, and you need to think in advance, there's a lot of strategy in it as well, you get some equipment as well, and you put that on the card, you have limited space, you need to buy new room, new cards and such, so... I like it very much. Uh, there is a lot to discover in this game. That's uh, Pioneer Days. And you can always, uh, if there will be an expansion for that, which will introduce some other stuff, then why not? Then Wanted, which I played only once, but I need to play it more. Uh, I will be reviewing this game as well. Uh, in this game, uh, you're going to different locations, kind of like out, out guessing, outsmarting, where you like choose what location you go to. And then if, both of, uh, if more than one person goes to the same location, you have a duel. And then you fight each other, and then you want to grab gold or money, and then you want to win with most money. And that's basically it. And some, like, uh, those locations have special abilities as well that you can get from there. So, uh, quite a light game. Uh, not casual, but light game. And I just need to play it uh, with maybe my colleagues from work. Then we have Brewcrafters. Um, now with Brewcrafters... This is a heavier game, as I understand, and it's about beer making, and it's, somebody said it's like Agricola with beer. Which I'm not into Agricola, I'm not into farming, but I, I always wanted to have a game about me beer making, I don't know why. And this one feels like it's going to deliver. Uh, it's a heavier game, and I don't know much about it, but the company is good, and it has good reviews, so let's hope for a great heavier Euro game right there. Then, Homesteaders, one of my favorite games of all time, uh, because it's an engine building game. You have some auctions as well, but basically, eventually you are buying build different buildings and you have those worker spots on them. You need to get some income, resources, uh, because if you don't have enough income to pay your workers and such, you need to take depth, and the depth is a lot of minus points and such, but you are kind of, you're building up. You're building up and eventually, in the end, you have lots of workers, lots of buildings to put them on. And then you are trading resources into other resources in order to get the right combination of buildings as well. Right combination of that stuff, that stuff. And you have a lot of that. I like the trading mechanism where you need to get those trade chits in order to trade resources for money or money for resources or one resource for another resource. And it's kind of restricting you. But on the other hand, it makes you think. And that's Homesteaders. I'm... Uh, the problem with this one, it, it needs an expansion in order to kind of um, have its staying power to get more variety in buildings and such. I heard about, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I heard about new edition and it will add the expansion and some variety, more variety to it. So um, anyway, let's hope for a great new edition coming soon because I love this game and would love to get a new edition. So... Then we have Kings of Ernst Team, which I love as well. And some people uh, seem to be not liking it that much. And if there are some overpowered characters, I just take them out. But I really like the idea of economy here and uh, the stock markets. And then airship movement. There's basically you program your airship with those movement cards and they have different speed. And you turn around, you pick up those cubes resources, you are getting them to the rails and then you are ship, like then you are um, making them go through the rails to cities and then you fulfill stuff and then you get points uh, or money sorry based on that and you can upgrade your ship uh, with uh, better cards uh, better capacity and such it's an amazing looking game it's a great game and I like it very much and I'm so sad that the expansion was never funded on the Kickstarter, and that TMG is not gonna make a new edition with the expansion on this one, which is extremely sad. I would say they should do it because this game would succeed more 
But I understand, like, they don't want to, like, accidentally throw away the money. But I'm sure this game would succeed nowadays even more with proper marketing. And, um, yeah, I hope just somebody picks up this game. Because Scott Arms sometimes does good games, sometimes he misses. And this is one of those games where Scott Arms made a great job with this one. And Seth Jaffe is the one who developed this as well. So, great combination of people there. Then Exodus Fleets, another game from uh, TMG, which I played only once. You manage your resources and you choose your actions and the others can like, kind of there's one who will get the maximum of the action, the other ones will get kind of a less of that action and you are gaining new ships and you are putting resources on those so you can spend them on, on uh, different uh, other stuff and points and blah, blah, blah. I need to play it more. I don't remember exactly how it played. I played it uh, in December, but I need to reread the rules. It, it's not like, like it's forgettable, but it's, it was night. I was extremely tired, and it was a very thinky game. So I need to play it more. That's Exodus Fleets. But I remember it was a nice experience. That's why it's still in my collection. And the last game's here. This Colosseum. I'm not going to take it out of this box, but you know about the Colosseum. Um... This is a new edition, so we had the old edition. I like the old edition. Alina didn't like it as much, so eventually we sold it, but now I got it back because I really like Colosseum. And this is the deluxe version. I'm fine with the looks of this new deluxe edition as well. It has really cool components, and it's just a great game where you are set collecting um, those different tiles, which are kind of a performers and decorations and such and you're trying to get the high score in performing and you're building uh, up your arena as well and trying to get yeah trying to get the most points but through this high score so if you score 90 points um, then next time if you score 80 points you still have like 90 points this is this is your high score for now you need to beat your own high score which is really really cool on the other high score as well then we have Vanuatu, which is an amazing looking game, uh, and it's a heavier game, like the action selection, it's brutal sometimes, you can get um, away with <laughs> none of actions to do, but you're building up those islands with hotels and such meeples, and then you are um, exploring a little bit, you're getting resources, you're getting money, and this, this action row on top, this is the one where the brutal gameplay comes in but I love it in this game we have a review of this game so take a look at the review of this game to know more about Vanuatu it's an amazing looking game and a really cool game Agra which is another amazing looking game at least not the cover I don't like the cover that much but um, the board itself and everything looks great and looks like a ton of pieces it looks extremely um, busy and uh, maybe fiddly as well and I heard some stuff like some, when somebody played for the first time they were like Oh my god, this is not good. Uh, but I heard some people who played it multiple times, they're like, oh, now I, they, they, they start to understand the game through multiple plays. And some, and you, you may say, like, you need to play every game in order to understand. No, I disagree. With some games, they click with you on the first game. Some games click with you more. You don't need to explore the strategies of the game in order for the game to click and say if you like the game or not. But... Uh, some games, they do not click except you will discover the strategy. I mean, some games I'm so involved, so strategic, so extremely um, uh, heavy that in order to like, like this game, you need, to, you need to know the strategy of the game. Otherwise, you will be doing nothing and you will not be scoring points and it will be an unsatisfying experience. But don't tell me I need to play every game multiple times in order to judge it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking about reviews, of course, for review I played multiple times, but, but I mean, uh, maybe my first impression wasn't good, and there's a ton of games I have that I want to play as well, and I really want to play them for the first time as well, and some games just, just don't uh, have enough, um, don't get enough chances, and that's a brutal world of uh, nowadays uh, gaming, board gaming world, where there's a ton of games coming out each year, and I just don't have enough time to play all of them anyway. Russian Railroads, uh, which I didn't want to buy for a long time because it looks so extremely boring and 
kind of looked like that, but eventually when I got this one, I played with it, I was like, wow, this is a great game. Uh, and, I, and I bought it after the first class. Um, I like the first class and then I got this one. Um, Russian Railroads, you're building up your roads. Basically, it's a point scoring, point salad game. Uh, but you have those worker spots. I really like the different worker spots. And you are uh, getting new trains. You're upgrading your own board, which is extremely cool. And as you go further on the tracks, you are getting some extra stuff that you can work with. And it's an amazing uh, Euro game, in my opinion. That's Russian Railroads. It has a lot of staying power still. I don't have the German Railroads. I like the base game so far, but I'm going to get the German Railroads as well. Uh, then the last one is Chimera Station, uh, which is um, those... You, you build up your own workers. I don't remember much about the gameplay, the different rooms, and you have workers and money and blah, blah, blah. I just don't remember about the game, but... The cool feature is that you can build up your workers and upgrade them and such. So, that's that. Let's put it away. And that's it. Now you have everything. I've seen everything, sorry. This is my shelf, except two games, which are Burgle Brothers and First Class, which are not on my shelf because they are with my friend. And then Rising Sun is coming very soon. It's, uh, it's on the way and I know some other Kickstarters will be fulfilled very soon. So we'll see how it goes and maybe I'll order some more games like for example Fork of Love. Anyway, thank you for watching. We'll see you another time. Thanks. Bye bye. This channel is sponsored by Osprey Games. Check them out at ospreypublishing.com.